today on Vital Insights. And working with them, I truly hands-on over the years have really gotten to see that bringing medicine and bringing a clinic into their home could improve their lives exponentially just in the fact that they no longer had to struggle to find a way to get to the clinic, to get to the bus, to get to the train, to get a person to come and drive them somewhere. So it, the promise of being able to help them was huge with this company. Welcome to an episode of Vital Insights, a podcast series focused on thought leaders and healthcare providers who are working to transform the way we care for patients, now and in the future. Welcome to a new edition of Vital Insights. Our two guests today join us from HealthyMed, an organization dedicated to improving the lives of the Medicaid participants living isolated at home in their community. HealthyMed's Clinic at Home telemedicine platform drives improved care outcomes, and we welcome our two guests today, Ron Mendelbaum and Shannon Holly-Smith, to tell us more about how their focus on the most vulnerable patients led to the demonstrated results they've been able to achieve. Welcome, Ron and Shannon. And before we get started, would you like to tell our listeners a little bit about yourselves and what led you to become part of Healthy Med's story? Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We appreciate this opportunity. As one of the founders of Healthy Med, my colleagues and I had been architecting this business really for three plus years, although each one of the members of the team uh, in, in their own re, uh, right has the decades of experience in healthcare. And this is the culmination or climax, if you will, of the desire to really move the needle in healthcare to, to serve the most marginalized an underserved population, and at the same time, really achieve that triple win and help drive out unnecessary costs, and most importantly, improve the lives of our clients and patients in a profound way. And that's really been our um, driving, uh, uh, driving force. Shannon, what about you? Um, I am an RN, BSN, and my primary background is with individuals in this exact community. So I have always worked, always, from the beginning of my nursing career, even previous to my uh, actual RN career when I was a nursing assistant, I've always worked with people in the Medicaid population. So people with multiple levels of healthcare diagnoses and healthcare struggles that they were dealing with in their home environment. And I realized and got to see and work with these individuals and understand very well the challenges of the individual themselves and how very much um, that the healthcare team itself is also lacking. So when I was given the opportunity to come on and work with Healthy Med, I immediately saw the promise of, of having these systems in place to help the healthcare uh, team members and to help these individuals as well out in the community. Um, I think a lot of them are out in the community just on their own trying to figure it out with very little help or very little input from big medicine. Um, so that's a fantastic endeavor. And you know, obviously we offer you our full support. Um, can you give me a for instance on that when you talked about kind of specific patients, um, just to maybe, for example, something you saw? Um, well, all the patients that I've worked with have almost exclusively some sort of mobility challenge, whether it be from a brain injury, if it be from a stroke history, um, or it could be from a spinal cord injury, that mobility challenge in and of itself um, hinders those people getting around in the community. So getting from clinic visit to doctor's visits, to the hospital, to the grocery store, to their friend's house. I mean, the very basic and 
um, necessary things that um, I and a lot of people like me who have really no medical needs to, to speak of take for granted every day. And working with them, I truly hands-on over the years have really gotten to see that bringing medicine and bringing a clinic into their home could improve their lives exponentially just in the fact that they no longer had to struggle to find a way to get to the clinic, to get to the bus, to get to the train, to get a person to come and drive them somewhere. So it, the promise of being able to help them was huge with this company. Absolutely. And accessibility is one of those main core components to those social determinants of health we talk about all the time. Um, so I, I truly appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, jump, shifting gears just a little bit, you've had the experience now of utilizing early sense technology. Um, Ron, would you like to tell us in broad strokes about how you're using it to impact patient outcomes? Absolutely. Uh Remote patient monitoring, uh, as we know, is, is not new as a concept. What is new is the direction of that in concert with redirecting the payment flow and creating alignment from all members of the, uh, of the team serving these patients. That is what's new and the ability to deliver that at home. We know it's useful, it's practical, it's affordable. And uh, our medical director, Dr. Dane Ship, is, is uh, fond of saying that vital signs are called that for a reason. They're vital. <laughs> Absolutely. And, it, and you have to review them uh, for the patient and have current ones on a real-time basis. And so while uh, this uh, deployment of the early sense technology in our client and patient base is new. Uh, the early signs, uh, no pun intended, are, are absolutely uh, uh, staggering. And, and, the, and the promise of what this looks to bring, uh, Shannon heads up our clinical team in, in concert with our healthy med doctors. And we just see great promise here. The, uh, uh, she's reviewing this data on a daily basis uh, it factors this remote metabolic monitoring factors into a number of sub scores that present themselves to the client on the TV in their home. They see a score for their vital signs. They see a score for their medication adherence. And soon, because of the promise of the early sense technology, they'll see a sleep score. And all of that information goes into our proprietary algorithm and the algorithm of care that, uh, that results in a health score, an overall health score that will be a number that is reviewed and stack ranked on a daily basis. And those on the top with the poorest health score, particularly those with uh, over the course of days and weeks trending in the wrong direction is exactly where we're gonna intervene with a call a video visit, a visit to the home, and occasionally what might result in a, uh, a suggestion to call 911 and go to the ER. But to the extent that we can reduce, and we think we can drastically reduce and near eliminate unnecessary ambulance rides, ER visits, and with this cohort, with the multiple chronic conditions that they manage at home, nine times out of 10 or more, when they show up at the ER, they're gonna be admitted. And therein lies all of the wasted cost to the healthcare system that they so, and particularly when it comes to Medicaid uh, and on a state-by-state -state basis, starting here in Minnesota, so desperately need to drive those costs out and, uh, and with no good uh, result in the health outcomes. And that's what's so, where there's such a disconnect and what we're trying to bridge and improve on. That's fantastic. Um, Shannon, can you talk a little bit about how your patients are responding to that type of clinical data being presented to them? Um, most of them are, are wowed. Uh, they're just astounded by the fact that when we turn on the TV or we talk to them about the early sense data, they can actually see real time what's going on with their metabolic functions with these vital signs. Um, 
a lot of them love the fact that um, they have some sort of control now over their disease state, whereas a lot of them, because of their multiple complex background, they feel like their disease state and the control of their own health is really out of their hands. They're relying on other professionals to do it. Yep. And now that they can see that real time at home is huge. You can see the light bulb come on in their eyes um, when we talk to them and when we install our systems in their house. That's fantastic. And I've heard that so many times about the ability to take control of your own health and not have that, you know, taken from you um, by, by a disease or a diagnosis. Um, can you anecdotally share, have you seen any shifts in behavior or shifts in thinking about, you, you touched a little bit about the reaction that they've had, but have you seen any positive changes based on that reaction? Oh, ab- Absolutely. Yeah, we have individuals who um, before were a little more hands off with their health care just because they didn't have the resources to be hands on. Um, and now they go out of their way every day when they take their medication to do their pulse, to do their oxygen level, to do their temperature, to check to see if they've taken their medication, um, to check to see if the system is working properly. So to be able to see that data streaming is is huge. Um, We've actually had um, a specific individual ask if she can get recordings of her early sense data because she was wanting to take it to her healthcare team, to her regular primary physician and speak to them about some of her apneic episodes that it it was recording. She was wondering if there were missing gaps in her healthcare that perhaps they should be addressing and they haven't been at this point. So it's huge. That's fantastic. Um, If I could could add to that. Yes, please. um, And the promise of that, uh, what what Shannon just uh, uh, articulated there, uh, that's so profound is what you are witnessing is the consumerism of healthcare. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And this, and this, and in a population that by market standards should be the last one to receive it and, and benefit from it because they don't have any of their own discretionary income. And so from a pure marketing standpoint, they are, uh, they have, uh, this is generally a, a, a population that has uh, very uh, uh, poor economics, uh, poor uh, social determinants of health, very little, uh, if any, family support. Mm -hmm. And when we started Healthy Med, they asked us, why are you starting with Medicaid? Those clients or patients, they don't have any funds. And we said, oh, Mm -hmm. wait a moment. They don't have their own funds, but they have over $50,000 per year each one of them of our taxpayer funds in the form of Medicaid spend, which is mostly state dollars, not federal, like like Medicare. And being a Medicaid uh, straight population, 18, predominantly 18 to 64, we do serve some of the duals who are above uh, 65 and older who are both Medicaid, Medicare, but our average age client is 36 years old. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, in some respects, that's very sad that they could be in this kind of uh, challenging situation at that young age. On the other hand, from a business opportunity, we have the ability to serve them, to support them, and help them in their journey of independence for years to stay living out in the community where they want to be, where the system now wants them to be, and where the all the media and regulatory momentum is is pushing. So there's a lot of momentum and uh, sort of mega trends going on in the world that are all converging at this time, uh, ubiquitous bandwidth, uh, et cetera, that are allowing for something like Healthy Med with um, uh, with the inclusion of early sense to uh, to really uh, come to fruition. And uh, that's what's really uh, exciting. Absolutely. And you touched on one of my favorite things or one of my favorite topics around remote patient monitoring, and that is the cost savings that it brings to communities. Um, Would you like to kind of expand on your ideas on how you think or anticipate that this type of solution could offer those types of cost savings to, to Medicaid patients and their communities? 
Yes, very simply, what is in our plan and roadmap uh, and where Early Sense is such a, uh, a tremendous contributor is, as you know, in healthcare, it's all about data. And if you have data to back up your claims and to prove uh, the, uh, the monitoring of what is going on, uh, particularly with this challenging population at home, then that speaks volumes. And the state is anxiously awaiting our data points that they will compute and extrapolate the savings and they will very clearly be able to determine the averted ambulance rides, ER uh, visits and hospitalization stays that have been avoided. And that directly will correlate to the cost savings that this system is driving. We'll know it already and already know it anecdotally, but the data uh, and, the, and it's one thing during the day when we have remote patient monitoring devices like Bluetooth thermometers, uh, pulse oximeters, weight scales, blood pressure monitors, et cetera, taking occasional readings, but that involves the client mm -hmm. and um, uh, involves their, you know, we incent and encourage that participation. But when you have during, at least for right now, all night, all of that data set and the night being so important so that during the next day, we're able to see that information in an actionable format and have it appear on the desktop of the nurse and the doctors who are supporting this client. That's, that's absolutely, uh, uh, and that's never been done before for this population. And, and intuitively, it's not where you would expect to see this sort of innovation. So it's very interesting that the biggest innovator in healthcare right now is states Medicaid because they are broke and broke in. They recognize the system's broken and must do something different and they're simply out of money. Well, you segued very beautifully into another topic that I wanted to touch on with you guys, which is patient compliance. Um, obviously, with remote patient monitoring, it is, it's a major issue. If we, if we don't have compliance, then we, we don't have the data that we need. Uh, do you see a benefit to a solution like this one that provides continuous monitoring that provides unobtrusive monitoring, um, the kind of set it and forget it type of technology that is so beneficial sometimes. Um, Shannon, can you talk about that a little bit with respect to this population? Of course. I mean, this population, you know, as we've already stated, has multiple complex levels of chronic conditions, and some of them even on top of that have acute conditions with these chronic conditions. Um, with this population, it's not unusual that with the amount of care they're receiving um, from support staff, the amount of medication they're taking, and their actual conditions that they're dealing with, they don't have the clearest thinking. A lot of them have foggy thinking, they have memory issues, um, and it's very, very commonplace that with people with chronic medical conditions and multiple levels of medical conditions, that they have uh, a co-diagnosis of anxiety and depression. And as anybody knows, that obviously clouds your, your thinking, and you just cannot check boxes on a list all day long of things you need to do. That being said, they have other things they have to do in their life. So having the contactless uh, monitoring is, is huge for these individuals. They don't have to remind themselves to do the monitoring. monitoring. It's just being done. And having that accurate real-time data and processes, it, less is more. It's better for this population for sure because they're getting the data they need we're getting the vitals that we need. And as long as we have um, that information coming in, we're still able to be able to be able to provide the health care that these individuals need that on their own, they may not be able to remember or may not be able to complete. That is, that's a perfect synopsis. Ron, did you have something you wanted to add there? Yeah, Liz, I would add to that, that we have to remember patient health is not an event. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, in healthcare today, we've come to view treatment as health. Mm -hmm. And for this cohort, it's really been about disease treatment 
unfortunately, it's been very little about health and care. Mm -hmm. And we need to change that trajectory. We need to uh, stop the downward spiral at a minimum and turn things around for this population to the point that they're thinking wellness, they're thinking uh, that they are participate, participating and incented and engaged in their care and an educated, engaged, knowledgeable will, uh, uh, patient will lead to more adherence and, and, and to uh, better care and better outcomes. I completely agree with Ron. I, I think healthcare, especially in the more recent years, they treat the problem, the acute issue, the acute flare up, but we're forgetting to treat the health of the individual across their lifespan. And if we can see that on a regular basis, we can prevent them ever having possibly and hopefully these chronic and acute flare ups and conditions and diagnoses to begin with. Yeah, this population has not been treated well and will continue to not be treated well in the big medical complex. That means you show up at the clinic when they tell you to be there, you wait in the waiting room until the doctor is ready for you, you get placed into an exam room and wait, you get told when to go to the hospital. That just does not serve this client well, creates further anxiety and uh, lack of adherence to the regimen that's been prescribed. And, there's, and today, it's been proven, and with the uh, early sense and other systems like it, Healthy Med can deliver upwards of 80 to 90% of primary care very effectively, certainly cost effectively, um, at home. And that, that's the promise of, of, what, uh, uh, of what we're looking to deliver and, frankly, what keeps us up at night uh, uh, perfecting what we're doing here and, and the drive to serve as many clients as we possibly can. Well, and I agree with you completely. I think technology is kind of the, the, not the silver bullet, but it's definitely a game changer in terms of being able to provide that oversight, that accessibility, um, and even address those social determinants of health that we were talking about before. Um, in terms of our, a quick wrap-up question, or it doesn't have to be quick, uh, we have talked for, for years about a shortage of healthcare resources. Obviously, that became, that exploded underneath COVID. Um, mm -hmm. Are you seeing that evidenced on your, on your front lines? Absolutely. Uh, there is a huge shortage. We see it. We feel it. Um, and it's not always in the terms people would think. Uh, we have a shortage of providers, but we also have a shortage of funding. And I think technology like this that's um, usable and it's applicable can really cut back on that funding because we don't need a clinic necessarily for all of this to take place. Obviously, if it can happen at home, you're cutting a lot of overhead costs. And that's going to help with the shortage because then those funds can be used towards other means as well. Yeah, and I would echo that, uh, Liz. The, there's always been a need for healthcare resources. And with an aging population, uh, the, uh, the demographics are, are, are creating a, a tremendous uh, challenge. So just to try to make just trying to make an appointment to see a doctor, we all know how challenging that could be even for a traditionally well population. These evolving technologies, like early sense, when deployed in a organized collaborative system of care called Healthy Med and our flagship offering of clinic at home, when they're deployed, that allows you to optimize and focus those resources and create a continuity of care, again, at home, that's unprecedented. And, it's, and, it's, uh, and it makes perfect sense. We're, uh, everyone uh, either remembers uh, those that are old enough uh, and, and those that aren't, you know, know that uh, from the stories of their uh, parents and, and grandparents, the doctor used to make house calls. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was a cash business. They knew the family. They knew all the, the social determinants of health. And, um, uh, and that was really, really good medicine. 
and and uh, the acute uh, episodes that needed a uh, occasional hospitalization, those hospitals were there for that. We all know what happened with the explosion of the medical industrial complex. And that's not for anyone's fault. It's not anyone was evil intending. It's just gotten to the point now where you think about the East Bank and the West Bank. We've got on the East Bank, all the helping professions trying their best, particularly those, the personal care attendants, the nurses, the home care nurses, the IHS workers, each one coming to the home on their own auspices, but not really coordinated or collaborating. Nurses having to chase down doctors because the doctors, frankly, aren't incented and just aren't that interested in dealing with one-off clients, particularly those that have poor reimbursement when uh, they prefer to see them in the clinic or frankly, wish they didn't have to see them at all, simply for economic reasons. And now with the advent of Healthy Med, convening and collaborating the home, leveraging cutting edge technologies like early sense and continuous contactless remote patient monitoring, uh, the, uh, what we, the doctor is coming back home. Mm -hmm. The doctor's coming back home in a high tech, but also high touch. It's not just about the tech. The tech enables the high touch. The high touch is what we call our hybrid version of telemedicine. And that's using the TV, using the camera, the medication dispensing robots, the early sense technology under the bed. All of those is the high tech part. And um, think of it as an electric vehicle but there's a reason why they have hybrid vehicles because occasionally you need gas. Our gas is, and the magic is when the nurse like Shannon here is in the home and assisting that encounter. And it's really a sight to behold that magic where the client is comfortable. He or she is in their home having a very nice visual presentation of the doctor on a large flat screen TV the same TV that they've been engaged with watching their movies and game shows and sports, feeling very comfortable and at home, what in essence becomes their window to the world because of the limited mobility uh, often that they have that uh, Shannon spoke of. And then you add the high touch where our nurse, like Shannon, is in the home during that encounter. The doctor, the nurse has been prepped with all of the uh, uh data from the remote patient monitoring of early sense in advance knows exactly the state of the state of this client. That is, is really phenomenal and, uh, 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 and is what is uh, going to be transformational for the clients uh, that uh, are fortunate to have this uh, in their home. I have to say, I love how you just beautifully articulated that technology is enabling us to return to a time when we had, you know, more hands-on care, um, more personal care, um, that was that was absolutely stunning. So I want to thank you both for joining us today. I want to thank you for what you're doing out there in the world. Um, if people want to know a little bit about, a, a little bit more about your business, where can they go to find some information? They could start off at our website, Healthy Med. Dot net h e a l t h e m e d healthy med dot net and uh, that would be a great place to start and uh, we would love to uh, uh, speak to anyone interested in learning more about what we're doing how we are implementing uh, early sense technology and our go to market strategy and the uh, successes uh, uh, that we're having out in the community uh, we'd be uh, honored and welcome uh, any uh, reach out. Excellent. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.